It makes no sense. Compels me, though. Glass Onion, the sequel to Knives Out. It had a limited theatrical run. It's now out on Netflix, which means I have now gotten to see it. And, okay. First of all, Knives Out, I don't think it actually made my top 10 of that year, but it's only because I don't think I saw it before the year was over. If it was on the top 10, it was high, because uh, it would have been. Because Knives Out is really good. It's really good. And this is, in a vacuum, just as good. That having been said, it can't have the same impact the Knives Out can because it doesn't have the newness factor. That having been said, it's not like if you are very familiar with Knives Out, you know what this is going to be doing. You might get a sense of some of it, but it's still just so well executed that it's just great. It's great. I'm here for more of these. If they can be this good, I am up for more. And I am going to have to talk some degree of spoilers uh, with this, but let, let me just start with the fact cast is great. Um, obviously, uh, Daniel Craig, still great as Benoit Blanc. And the rest of the cast, it's a stacked cast. Not just for, like, the main folks, because, you know, we've got Edward Norton and Dave Bautista and Kate Hudson, uh, Janelle Monet, um... Uh, uh, Catherine Hahn, God, drew a blank there for a hot second. And and there's cameos out the butt on this. Like, I was noticing people like, wait a minute, is that, wait, what? <laughs> so, like, it's, it's a loaded, loaded cast. But they're all doing really good work. The structure of the thing is an appropriately twisty mystery. It's got some, it's got, uh, some twists that maybe you'll get ahead of, but I don't think anyone will get ahead of all of them. I'd be very surprised. And then as it unravels and you get to the true answers, it's it's satisfying. It's satisfying in a lot of ways. If I were to pick an MVP, it would be Janelle Monet. She really, like, everybody's good in this. And like, I really liked Kate Hudson in this too. And I'm like, Kate Hudson's an actress who like I've, I've been aware of, but I'm just kind of like, yeah, she's in things. She's fine, I guess. She was great <laughs> in this. She was fantastic. But Janelle Monet is the MVP uh, of this particular one. Much like, much like Anna de Armas was the MVP of Knives Out. Again, even though that entire cast was great. Uh, another way in which this is kind of taking uh, something that the previous film did and kind of running with it is that the previous one was a skewering of <sighs> old money's the wrong way to put it. Not necessarily old money, but people who were rich in a very traditional way, um, if that makes sense. You know, really big built, built up house. Everyone's kind of squabbling for the for the inheritance, you know, these stuck up white, it was wasps. It was a whole bunch of wasps. Um, if you're not familiar with that term, it stands for white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Uh, it, there, it's more than just a plain descriptor. Wasp culture is a thing in the U.S. But that was very much what it was skewering. The first one, Knives Out. This one is also skewering rich people, but a different flavor of rich people. This is skewering the tech bros, the suburban... Um, you know, the, the suburban Karens who are launching into politics, the online influencers, the celebrities who can't shut their mouths. You know, it's, these people are rich to varying degrees, much like pretty much everybody in the last one was. And it is definitely having fun with them, but it gets to do different things because this is a different flavor of rich person. So you're going to make fun of different things about them. Um, but it's, it's, just as well executed. <laughs> and the, the way it kind of gives you the information, the pace at which it is put out, like, it's not a short movie. It's over two hours, but it doesn't waste any time. Um, I suppose the other thing, the main thing I would say that differentiates this, other than, you know, the flavor of some of the characters, is that this is a more active situation. Whereas the previous one was more about figuring out what had happened. Um, and there were certain elements of it that were more present. But this one's much more about 
nothing goes wrong until a bit into the movie. But like any good mystery, you know something's going to go wrong. So you're still like watching for clues, trying to see what's going to happen. But it's a more active situation because the murder happens when Benoit Blanc's already there. That's not really a spoiler. It's a murder mystery. You should know that a murder happens. And the initial setup is that Benoit Blanc and all these people are invited to an island by this supposed genius, uh, you know, tech billionaire guy. So, and you know, the starting premise, and it's in all the trailers, Benoit Blanc and these people, they're invited to this island to play mystery games by this tech billionaire. So that's, I don't think it's a spoiler to say there's a murder in the murder mystery. Uh, that having been said, I gotta, I gotta do spoilers to talk some of the clever stuff, some of the extra clever stuff and some of the cathartic stuff. So, um, if you like the first one, like you've probably already seen this, you should go see, go, 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 go watch it. It's great. Uh, first of all, the person who dies is not who you're expecting. I think like the obvious setup is that Edward Norton's character is going to die, but he doesn't. The the character who dies is Dave Batista's character. Um, so that's the first thing that throws you off. And then once you realize the ongoing deception that was at play between Benoit Blanc and uh, Helen, who was masquerading as Cassandra, and you you figure out what's going on there and everything suddenly has a deeper layer and the movie graciously rolls back and extends out a few scenes so that you can see what you've been missing. And that is all really well done. And I love, I love that ultimately what was throwing Benoit Blanc off was the fact that he was overthinking it. He came in here looking for puzzles, looking for intricate clues um, you know, carefully laid out plans. It was all just idiocy. And I just love his his exasperation with that. It's like, it's just so dumb. <laughs> I love that. I love that he thought he was trying to outwit someone. He's just dealing with idiots. Nobody in this room is smart. Not really, not across the board. Some of them like have some degree of like, some of them are a little tech smart. Some of them, have a little bit of emotional intelligence, not a lot, but like n all these people are varying degrees of idiots and realizing that the supposed tech genius is a freaking moron and suddenly realizing, oh, I've been looking for intricate plans when he's just a dumbass. He was just doing the most obvious dumbest thing that my brain automatically skipped over because like, well, it can't be that. No, it is. It is. And I love, I love Daniel Craig's just frustration with that. And then I mentioned catharsis. Watching, <laughs> watching Helen smash everything and set it on fire. <laughs> uh, that was, uh, that was good. That was cathartic in a similar way to seeing uh, Ana de Armas face off against, well, initially Chris Evans and then the entire rest of that family in the first one was. And in both cases, it's taking the person, taking the person who is tied to this world but doesn't belong here and letting them have the victory because we establish very clearly everyone who actually lives day to day in this world, you're all awful. You're all terrible. None of you deserve anything. She does though. And she gets it. And it's great. I had a real good time with this. I, I honestly have no complaints. This is really fantastic. And the only thing that holds it back at all is the fact that it can't be as fresh as the first one. Because the first one, like, I expected something kind of clever, but it caught me completely off guard with how good it was. This one, I, it can't, it couldn't exceed my expectations because my expectations were set by the previous film. However, it's never a given that those things are going to meet your expectations. But this did. I had very high expectations for this. And it met them. This nailed it. This was great. Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery.
What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills, enables me to do this as my living. Got this one just under the wire before the end of the year. Um, and I hope that you uh, are having a good tail end of the year yourself. But no matter what is going on, just try and relax. We try and take a relaxed attitude around here. So you can just come on back next time we need a break. End of the video, so I gotta shout out my top patrons. Robin Moore, Zubin Mutfulla, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Oliver B, Angus Bjarnason, Melinda Walters, Imudelki, The Oath of Boyd, Katoria, Toy Loli, Becky Sparks, Fernabulax the Poodle, Zach, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Tim Price, Adam R.D.L. Taylor, Shayla Gourlay, and Brendan LaRose. Thanks for your support. If you want to he hear me probably mispronounce your name as well, check out the rewards on the Patreon. How you doing there? <laughs>